Marty O'Donnell, the original composer for Halo Music, is not too happy about how 343 and Microsoft are using his compositions and how Phil Spencer mentions that maybe Halo Infinite isn't that necessary for a good launch to happen for the Xbox Series X. Stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you some more Halo information, news, and all that awesome stuff guys. If you like these kind of videos, make sure to tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this and it greatly helps out the video and channel so more people get the chance to stay in the know with everything going on with Halo. So we have two bits of news for you guys today, both relating to Halo Infinite in some way or another. We're going to start talking about what's going on with Mario O'Donnell and his recent uh, issues that he's had on Twitter with 343 and Microsoft use of Halo music. And then we'll go into about Phil Spencer and what he has to say about Halo Infinite not making it the launch of the Xbox and how it might not actually have been that important. So what I'm talking about, Marty O'Donnell, he goes out and just tweets this out without really tagging or saying anything, saying, something for young composers to remember, Silent Night was composed by Hans Gruber. I was inspired by it and made a new piano arrangement. It would be unethical to claim to be the composer of this new piece, even if I changed the name to Through the Silent Night. Uh, essentially what Marty is talking about right here is he's saying that how Halo is still continuing to use some of the same music that he created, but not really give him any credit within that source. If you guys remember, uh, Halo recently posted up on back in August, one of the new songs for the soundtrack called Through the Trees, which is kind of a play off of the previous work that Marty O'Donnell did called A Walk in the Woods. Now the version of Through the Trees in Halo Infinite does use some of the parts Marty O'Donnell used as kind of a motif for the song, but they definitely expanded on it. And I think they even used a different key and just had a totally different kind of feel when it comes to the Through the Trees in Halo Infinite compared to A Walk in the Woods in Combat Evolved. Here's some quick side-by-side -side audio comparisons so you guys can make out the distinctions for yourself. So yeah, there definitely are similarities. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people are gonna be jumping up going, oh my God, copyright. Well, not exactly. Since Microsoft owns the rights to Halo, they probably also own the rights to the music as well. So I'm pretty sure Marty doesn't actually own any part of Halo music. He should be probably noted as the original composer in a way. I can kind of agree with that, though I wouldn't say it's like legally necessary for that whole situation. I mean, this could be an issue if, if you credit Marty O'Donnell as the like original composer or credit him in some way that probably would entitle him to get some form of royalties, which I'm sure Microsoft is not trying to pay more for the property that they already own. But I think Marty O'Donnell should get the credit that he deserves for the original composition of this song. I think so. I mean, it would make sense. Ethically, I would think it would make sense. Uh, legally though, there might be some things tying that away from being able to claim Marty O'Donnell as a composer of the song. Plus enough things were changed within Through the Trees that probably warrant it being like technically its own version and stuff, but I can understand Marty O'Donnell's frustration within the situation, but I can also probably understand the uh, legality and also the technicality, I guess, behind what is actually considered a new song for Microsoft side of things as well to not give him credit. If I was Marty, yeah, I'd be kind of triggered as well. And to another interview with Phil Spencer talking about the Xbox Series X. This was actually done on November 9th, the day before the release, but the news just kind of recently came out because they talked on a rather smaller kind of news website called Shack News. No, not, not that Shack, that Shack. And on this interview, he was asked the question of how much did Halo Infinite affect the sales of the Xbox Series X since everyone kind of viewed Halo Infinite to be the console seller game, but now obviously having the game being delayed, not meeting the release of the console, did that actually affect the sales? And this is kind of interesting what Phil Spencer actually said about it. I wanted Halo Infinite at launch. There was no doubt about that. We thought it would have been a special seminal moment because the last time we shipped a Halo and console at the same time was the original Xbox. When Bonnie Ross and I were talking about it, there was something heartfelt about those two things coming together. But the health and safety of the team 
has got to be first and foremost, and then the quality of the game. Those things have to win over anything else. Bill Spencer continues on saying, we see that our pre-orders sold within hours, and that's true of the competition as well. There's a high demand for gaming consoles right now, and we're both going to build as many as we can. So I think the possibility of Halo Infinite launching besides Xbox was more of a brand and heartfelt moment for us than it was critical to the launch. In fact, you could argue that holiday 2021 from a lineup is probably more important because from a competitive standpoint, both consoles, knock on wood, will have supply so there will be demand constraint rather than a supply constraint in the next year. So this is rather interesting because I think this is the second time within interviews that Phil Spencer has mentioned the competition of a holiday 2021 and Halo Infinite together. Could he possibly be alluding that the game is most likely going to release in the fall of 2021? If so, as a Halo fan and a content creator, that has me a little bit concerned because I'm really excited for this game. I know a lot of people are, but we also want to make sure this game comes out guns a-blazing. And apparently, according to Phil Spencer, their pre-orders sold out. They don't need like a super great launch lineup when it comes to the games. I think maybe just because they built up such a great backlog of already awesome games that you can play right now on your consoles and on your PCs, that being able to have such a great performance upgrade of like 120 FPS, 4K resolution and things like that. Those are legitimate upgrades that would make people want to buy the console just for that itself. For a previous generation, like going from the 360 to the Xbox One, wasn't really that much of a leap. Like, yeah, there's some obviously better graphics, but like not really that much of improvement, you know, performance wise, because you're still getting 1080p 60 fps at best when it comes to the xbox one so from a hardware standpoint this is probably one of the biggest leaps in console generations we've ever seen within gaming so that could be a reason why there was such a demand to buy the new xbox consoles and so then not needing a console seller game like halo infinite at launch might have been you know okay though it does kind of also worry me as a dedicated halo fan and dedicated halo channel that xbox and kind of view halo infinite or just the halo franchise in general is not a necessity for the console and platform to do well. Oftentimes gaming communities tout their exclusivity deals that they have on each console for a reason why to buy either one. But does this mean that like Phil Spencer and Microsoft might be viewing Halo as something not that necessary? No, I think they still view it as probably their main shooter that they have. Uh, obviously having exclusives on your platform will help give people reasons to buy that one over another one. Though only time will tell. We do know Sketch did mention about we will have a news update when it comes to Halo Infinite, a high level, I'll put in quotations there, update about Halo Infinite coming in the next few weeks so we can, might get a better understanding of when we could expect to see some more Halo Infinite content coming our way. It sounds like after the holidays is when we'll start seeing that marketing ramp up and the uh, promotional mater materials going out more often after the holiday season. I think right now they're still just kind of working on things internally, rescoping everything within the game to make sure they can meet the deadlines that they would want to meet and put in the content that absolutely needs to be in the game. But how do you guys feel about Marty O'Donnell not getting what is due to him, essentially? I mean, uh, I think it's kind of part of the business, though I do feel like he should get some kind of credit. And also with Phil Spencer kind of mentioning again about a potential holiday 2021 release for Halo Infinite. Kind of concerning as me as a Halo fan, but if it makes the game better, I'm I'm willing to wait. It's hard, but I'll do it. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I greatly appreciate it. Check out the videos on the screen right here if you missed any content from me recently. I'll catch you on the next video. Peace out.